Hi guys, it's Trenna from John's Furniture Repair here with another project in the shop. And here she is. Uh, this guy's been painted many, many times. It's actually a really beautiful um, antique piece. And uh, we're gonna be bringing it right back to the original. Basically everything has been painted. So inside and out, you can see someone's had like newspaper on the inside of that and just kind of got left there. It's a real big mess. And uh, I'm hoping it's gonna come off the back panel and everything as nicely as it comes off the other pieces. It's uh, an actual Maddox, so it's a really nice antique piece. And when it's cleaned up, it's, it's really gonna be something. Um, but again, that's gonna be quite a job. So the inside as well is completely covered in paint. So we're gonna be taking everything out of here to be able to get that off. Um, and then also, you know, all the hardware on this stuff was painted. Uh, looks like white first and then a really cakey application of black. And uh, thank goodness that the inside of the drawers, although needing some work, don't have paint. So that's good. Um, but even, you know, these parts that pull out here, they're all painted. So this is all going to have to come out because this is just caked full of paint. Again, we find the lattice work on the outside of the cabinet when it's supposed to be on the inside. So I'll be switching that around again. I guess the finial must have gotten lost in the, in the mix. So it's, uh, although a little bit broken here, I'm gonna have to be fixing that too. It's supposed to have a nice little point on it. Um, get that white paint off of there as well. But I'll just show you guys a little closer what I'm looking at. So here you can see the newspaper messy job on the back of that lattice and uh, just the really cakey job that was done. And it's all on the inside. And here I'll show you, I'm gonna have to get that all off. So this is gonna be a good job. And you can just see it's just drooped on the end of, ends of doors and a big drip there. It's just gross. The hinges are covered. Hardware is covered. The uh, pull-out pieces have lots of cakey weird stuff and I don't know what the heck that is. Uh, the original hardware is still here and the key is here so we've got everything we need to make it beautiful. Um, the legs, we've got really nice clawfoot feet here so those will be good to, fun to clean up. And uh, we'll be doing a seal and a clean on the drawers because they've got a little bit of there as well but it's I think it's gonna come off fairly easily and I might do more of like a, a heat gun pull off before I do any stripping because um, there's quite a layer so you can just see there so if I can heat gun off the paint then I can strip off the original finish and uh, get it back down to a nice clean wood. I think it's an actually pretty awesome shape. So drawers are working good. They're not really worn. Um, everything is here. You can see Maddox still has the uh, label intact here. So I think other than a really bad paint job, this piece is in really great shape. So let's get it taken apart and get at it.
Okay, so everything is taken apart and all the nails are pulled out and everything is as much broken down as I can get it. And uh, that's half the trick to cleaning up stuff like this. So I've got the whole shelf here on the bench. I'm gonna strip that first. And then I've got the drawers and the doors sitting here waiting, the back panels. Um, the chest is completely stripped down to just the case. And uh, I don't know if I'll do much up there. I don't think they painted up there too much other than maybe the tops of these I'll get. But even the inside upper parts here I'm gonna be getting and the back of the frame, door frame there. So um, a few repairs on some drawers. I thought this was in perfect condition, but there's still a little bit of wear. You can see here, uh, we've got a pretty good groove going on this drawer slide, this one as well. That one's not bad, actually. Um, there's a little bit on the top ones as well. So we're just gonna give those uh, freshen up so everything's working well. And then there's a couple of loose um, slides in here that we need to re-glue. So not too much work, not as bad as a lot of cabinets I've had lately, but uh, we'll deal with that and make sure it's good. So let's get to stripping. Okay, so I've got all the pieces for the cubby hole stripped and sanded and ready to go back together. And I also got the little um, pull-outs stripped and sanded and the hardware, they're all cleaned up. So I did that at the same time. I was gonna stain these pieces before I put them on, but I don't think it's gonna be that difficult while it's together. So I'm just gonna do it after so it's just one piece and easier to handle so i've got everything laid out where it goes and i had it all marked so that wasn't hard so i'm basically just going to get some glue in here that need stripping on all sides and everywhere. I usually work in planes, so because it was standing here already, I'm decided to do the tops first, and then I'll get the tops of the drawer frames. And then when I flip it on side, I can do all the sides on one side and the other side. And it's just easier to keep everything clean that way and not have a bunch of stripper dripping out everywhere. So I did heat gun this surface because it had a, so much paint on it that I just wanted to get through the layers without having to put on so much uh, stripper. And this one we did stripper so because it wasn't as cakey. But I'm just about ready to do a steel wool here and then uh, get down on these planes over here, clean them up.
Okay, so work continues on this guy. I actually ended up taking the feet off to clean them up just because there was a lot of paint in this groove and I wanted to clean it up so there wasn't a big goopy mess there. And paint and grooves is like really annoying to me. So I had to get it off. And that gave me a good chance to clean them and fix them and uh, re-glue them. They were a little bit loose. Uh, but now they're nice and tight and re-glued on there. So those are taken care of. Um, the face of this piece is pretty much prepped. Uh, we got the top done yesterday, all that molding. So basically now, um, just cleaning up in here, a little bit sanding. Uh, we just have the sides and the inside of the, the cabinet left. So flats, surfaces, which will go nice and fast and just a little bit of molding left. But those are the last things that we have to strip. So we've come a long way. We've got all of this stuff here prepped and all of this stuff prepped and the back panels prepped and ready for stain. So just finishing this guy up and then we'll sand everything one last time and that's off to stain.
So this thing is completely prepped, top to bottom. All of the black and white paint removed off of every square inch of this thing, and it's looking good. Up here was tough because it was pretty raw, so a lot of scrubbing, getting everything out of the corners. There were a lot of repairs, chunks out like this, or we used epoxy putty, uh, pieces missing. The feet were, the back feet were in need of some attention, so those got some work. Uh, these turned out pretty good. So we've got a veneered walnut side with a poplar frame. So that's why you see that white strip there. So that'll just need to be stained to match and probably use some tinting there. But we are ready to rock and roll with stains. So I've got to figure out my color here. Uh, even cleaned up all back here because there was so many paint globs and, and speckles. So I wanted to get everything looking good. I did some repairs on the inside, put some strips of veneer uh, where the the runners were kind of worn down. Just, there was only three of them that were really bad, so did those three. The rest of them looked pretty good. I just waxed everything up and made sure it was uh, nice and smooth. Same with these guys in here for these pullouts to slide in. I waxed the runner in here and sanded it nice and smooth. So. That is all ready to go. Same with these guys. So let's get some stain moving. Okay, so I've decided to use Mohawk's Raw Umber uh, wiping stain. And I will have to do some tinting on these poplar areas, but I already knew that, so that's not really a big problem. I'm more interested in how it's hitting the walnut. So I just did a little test area in here. So that's a really nice light color. Uh, I don't want to accentuate the red of the piece of the walnut, so I like that Wara Umber has a little bit of green to kill that red. And then the face frame I will stain and then probably uh, either spray tint or do another glaze over top to get the poplar to come into line. But I'm going to hit everything with the same stain first and then go from there.
Okay, so I've got everything stained up here. Um, what I'm noticing is, and I knew this was gonna be the case, that the poplar is needing a lot of warm up. So these are the um, walnut drawer fronts against the poplar frame here. So what I'm gonna do on top of my raw umber on the poplar is I'm gonna add burnt umber, which is a nice orange color, just to warm that up and bring it a little closer to my walnut. Good, so I think that's gonna be the right color. You kind of see it brings everything into line. And you're looking at the walnut here. So I think in general, the whole piece will need some tinting on the whole thing afterwards, but I'm gonna do this as a preliminary step just to get them a little closer together. So I'm gonna do the frame, feet, shelves, anything that's uh, looking a little bit too green. Okay, so I've got all the poplar parts stained with the burnt umber. It looks a lot better with uh, the drawers now. And I did the little strip of poplar on the side too, just to give it some color. So I will probably be tinting this thing over completely with a toner just to bring everything into the same family, but I'm liking how it's starting here. So this can go to the booth and dry for a day. Okay, so while the cabinet's drying, I can get to cleaning up this hardware, which is in pretty bad shape. Everything's covered in paint like everything else was. Um, I think it's the original hardware, those. So these will be solid brass, so those will come up nice. But uh, definitely like all the hinges are super caked, like everything. And uh, will need to be completely stripped into like shelf pins, globs of paint on them. So I'm just gonna get everything in stripper and let it soak and start scrubbing every little individual screw and piece until it's all nice and clean. Okay, so I got the hardware here and I've ordered this stuff, which was a recommendation from my very first subscriber who does a lot of brass work, really nice work. And so I'm gonna give it a whirl. Brass of sucks, so I'm excited to see if this stuff is any better. So I've got it on a couple pieces here and I was gonna shine them up, but they had a nice tarnish on them from the factories. This is kind of um, a little bit of what they're supposed to look like, but not that dirty. So I'm trying to bring up the center a little bit more and then leaving, I'll probably shine these up a little bit more here and then leave a little bit of the tarnish on the edges and in the grooves and stuff. So I'm just kind of working at that. It's kind of impossible to really shine these up completely, which I don't even think would look good. So I just want to leave a little bit of character around the edges. And then all the nice points that are sticking out will have a, a good shine to them. Like these little balls and the tips in the center. None of the other hardware is really full brass, so that would look weird having very brassy handles on a piece without any other areas like that. So I just kind of want to clean up and restore what was original. Just 
got a little bit more life to it and we will clear coat that as well but it still has all its character scrapes and scratches and the tarnishing and the edges and stuff like that so i kind of want to leave that and uh yeah so i'll work through those to get them all good and the other little handle that we have here is for the little um, piece or little drawer in the secretary and that one I'm just going to buff up the edges on the front little rings here and then around the side and that'll be good for that guy that looks nice all right, so I'll get the rest of these done. light wood in there and I don't like that so I'm gonna take my pro mark and I'm just gonna give it a nice even dark color right in the groove there you could do this with uh, dye stain or um, paint if you wanted to but this is the easiest thing so I'll probably do a couple coats I just want that to kind of stick out and not be not in a bad way, so I think that looks a little bit better. Just make sure to get the color everywhere. And there's a couple light parts, like um, where there was a little bit more damage, where I'm just gonna feather out and do stuff like that. A lot of it's on the base here, which I'm not gonna be using a marker for. I'm actually gonna uh, do a tint on uh, Maybe just hit this edge with the marker because it was really worn out here and uh, whenever that happens the stain that was in the in the wood is gone so I'll just need to do like a little bit of tint work here with some of my toners so I'll show you that when we do that okay so on the side of the cabinet they had this poplar uh, piece which is the front face frame so I don't want a hard line even though this is a hard line to do my tint work with. So what I'm gonna do first uh, is use a, just a paper that doesn't really sit close. So kind of, when you're spraying it, a few particles of the toner will float over to the other side. That's gonna help blend. If you do a straight hard line, you're gonna get a very uh, distinct color change from here to here. And that's not exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna just kind of hold it up very, loosely over that side and I'm going to start with a fiddle tone cherry which is kind of a muted milky uh, burnt umbery kind of color just going to go through the whole thing that's going to kind of get the red of the walnut 
going there. You can see that. And then I'm going to go over it with um, raw umber to get the deeper color that I want. And I might go back and forth between the colors, just pulling it more to red or green until I kind of get what I want. So I'm looking like I still want a little bit more red, so I'm going to bring back my fill tone. And you know, I'm moving this card back and forth every time and it's getting a different line every time I spray, so it's really helping to blend. If you do auto body work, you know that this is a trick to um, do any type of blending. So there, that's kind of what I'm gonna go for there. There are a couple other um, spots on, remember if, we, if you remember we did a couple of repairs on the leg. Put you guys down here so you can see. So right down here, right out of the way, we've got some repair to the veneer and then some epoxy putty. So I'm going to draw in some of my grain and kind of fool the eye that this you know veneer just continues down here. And then I'm gonna draw in a few little not as much as the, the wood has, but just, again, just enough to fool the eye. Way down here at the bottom, and nobody's really going to be bending over to take a super, super close look. But even if they do, it'll look good. there and then I'm gonna give it a general a little bit of a darker there we go and now that a little bit of color work is done underneath I'm gonna use the same colors as I did on the side there I'm gonna start with a fiddle tone and this is going to soften all those lines And then I'm going to come in with my raw umber and just bring it a little bit closer to the caramel brown instead of the reddish. And that's good. There are a few other little spots that I'll just touch with color. Right here we've got a veneer repair that we did. red pigment over top of it. Really kind of be careful to not go too harsh in a line anywhere. And then same thing, I'll just I'm gonna protect this leg a little bit and just slightly hit that area with the fiddle tone and the raw umber. And then we'll just kind of blend it into that leg there. So those areas look a lot better. A little veneer right there. Awesome, so that's pretty good for the rest of this side. I think it's looking pretty good. 
So I'll just finish up a couple little touch-ups all over the cabinet and then um, I'll decide if I need to tone the whole thing over or if we can just go on for the uh, second coat. So second coat is on and all of the color work is done. Tons of touch-ups. I did uh, raw umber tint over the whole entire cabinet along with some fiddle tone everywhere just to kind of wherever needed more red. You got the fiddle tone wherever I needed to tone it down. Got the uh, raw umber and then everything got raw umber over. So I like the color, it looks pretty good. We've got the doors here under their third coat, um, or sorry, second coat on this side. So I'll probably need to sand those and do another one. Uh, tricky part about doors like this is matching your lattice work uh, when it's not together. So I'm always just careful to see. Looks like it's gonna work. It goes behind the glass, so it'll be a little, I've made it a slight bit darker just because the glass kind of mutes the dark tones. So these guys I just uh, gave a little squirt, they're fine. And uh, the lid here, or the drop down, has uh, the finished coat on the inside and I haven't done anything on this side yet. So I might do that tomorrow and just let that dry. Uh, back panels are finished, shelves are done, cubby holes are all sprayed and tinted, so those look good. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is just put a third coat on the general cabinet here and uh, hopefully, <laughs> excuse me, we are done with the cabinet itself. So I've sealed all the drawers inside as well. Might do another sealer coat before I do the whole thing. Okay, so on the drop down supports, uh, these were the old little felt strips that were held in by nails. And I'm gonna make some new ones out of some adhesive back um, felt. So I'm not gonna actually, well actually I should use these again, just in case. So I'll just pop these out. I was thinking of just using the adhesive, but over time, I think maybe they might come loose again. Let's give those a little swirl on a scotch pad. So I'll just kind of cut the same size. Two strips here and then Pop that through. And just stick my new strip on there. Just 
just like that. So that'll protect the lid when it's opening. Onto the other side. Uh -huh. It's always nice having these supports because it makes it a lot easier to reinstall the hinges. holding it in place and some shims. So in the back, I'm just going to put a shim in and the nail back in the spot it was supposed to go. Okay, so I've got the little shim in there and the nail. So that's all in there nice and sturdy. So let's put the, I think I'm gonna put the shelf hangers on because it's easier to do while the back is off and then uh, we'll put the back panels on. All right, so we got all the shelf pins in and just in case you didn't notice, all of my slotted screws face the same direction. Horizontal here on the pins and on the hinges and the supports, all the same direction. Just a little bit of extra detail that I like to do when I'm using those screws. So now that we've got those in, I'm going to get some back panels on this thing. hardware installed. Everything is clean, polished. This was a big one. It looks really great. I love this color. I think we hit it bang on. Let's see. Got that little guy that we fixed up there. And the color highlights in there that we did. And we got the uh, lattice on the inside of the doors like it should be so you can easily clean the outside of the glass when it gets dirty and got it all refinished nicely in here as well remember there was paint everywhere even on the top there so this is all cleaned up we got a little hardware that was so goopy that's all cleaned up now and these fit together perfectly and the key is working good and the drop down remember these guys that were so cakey look how nicely they operate now and remember we took this whole thing apart and refinished everywhere inside did a full refinish on the little drawer Put a coat on it everywhere. Got a little polished knob there. It looks really sharp. And uh, cleaned up all these hinges and stays. We got a little lock that actually functions now. It was full of paint. And the drawers, we did a nice uh, seal on the interior. So that's all clean. And uh, all the handles got a polish with a little bit of distress left in the crevices and these legs are really popping now that they're 
uh, stripped and all clean looking. We did a little bit of work on that edge that was quite damaged. And uh, remember the backs of our legs here. You can see a little bit still right there. But it's not noticeable. Same thing on the other side. And up here down there. So, it is done. Thanks for joining me on this one again, guys. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. And stay tuned for more. Cheers.